right guys so Dalton and Garrett back with you you know we had a short little break been off about a week we got some other videos coming to you today we're actually going to talk to you about how to actually tack it up in position how to put in a root in properly and how to put a proper hot pass in we've got our plates from last week tacked together and ready to go uh, also in this video we're going to show you how the actual contest actually plays out you know I'm going to actually play the part of the contestant and I'm going to play the part of the QC so as part of the QC we'll make sure it's tacked up in the 2G position and the 3G position. And then we're also going to show you what's going to happen. Let's say if you don't get it you know, straight up and down, you know, the proper way that 2G and that 3G is supposed to be played out. Don't worry about it. We're actually going to show you what it's going to not look like and then what it should look like and what happens if you actually do mess up a little bit and it's no big deal. All right, guys, hang back. I'm going to start getting these tacked up. All right, guys, so now you're getting ready. You got your plates tacked together. You got them fit up and ready to go. Now it's our time to start tacking them in position. So right now I'm gonna actually tack up the 2G position. Uh, let's just say if you tack it up laid back like this, which that's a no-no. You want it more up and straight up and down. Let's say if you get a little excited, a little nervous or something goes wrong, let's say what happens here. So you fit it up like this. You got that one laid back a little bit. And say your 3G, you got it laid forward just a touch. So then that you got it tacked up in position, now it's time to get the QC to come in and check everything. So step outside your booth, raise your hand, get his attention somehow. If he's in a booth helping another student, don't freak out, just wait patiently and then call for the QC. And then he'll come in and he's going to check off my fit. You like it? Yeah, I like it. Alright, boy, we're going to have to break these two off. Alright, so they're not perfectly vertical. We'll break this off. Alright, so when you take up your horizontal, you'll make sure it's perfectly vertical, right? And this plane right here. You might make sure you're horizontal. The weld is actually running horizontally, but the plate itself, the face of the plate, is going vertical. Alright, so now that we got them re-tacked back up in the in the proper position, you know, we got a horizontal or a 2G. Uh, the plates are good and flat, the 3G is standing upright. Uh, when you get them tacked in there and they're on there pretty good, make sure that you have a good solid tack, because the last thing you want is those plates to fall off in the middle of that test. So now that I got them re-tacked up in position, I'm going to get the QC's attention again, have them come back in and re-examine the test plates. You like it, buddy? All good. Oh yeah, that looks a lot better. What he's going to do now is he's actually going to mark the positions that they were in, his name, and check it off. That way now we know that it's good, the fit-up's ready to go, and after he gets done with that, you can weld from your root to your cap. Alright guys, so now we're going to start with the 2G root. It doesn't matter which one you start with actually. Uh, the 2G, that's just the one we're going to begin with. You can start with either or. Um, but again, we're going to hit this 2G real quick. Now, when I fire up on this, there's going to be a couple things I'm actually going to talk to you about. Uh, just make sure you're favoring that top edge just a little bit because again, that gravity is going to want to pull that puddle down. Uh, making sure you're pushing back into the puddle and holding to make sure you're getting a good fill on it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so starting out here, you can see how I'm keeping the rod pushed in. Uh, all the sparks are coming out through the backside, so that's good. I'm favoring that top edge just a little bit. You can see how I'm kind of whipping that rod in and out. Um, basically, when I whip out, I'm coming back. I'm cutting that keyhole open. When I come back, I'm pausing there for a second, you know, really making sure I'm getting a, lot, a good penetration on that backside. Uh, I'm just favoring that top edge just a touch. You can kind of see my rod angle right there. I'm making sure that I'm cutting the top and the bottom and everything's going good. All right guys, so right now I've actually got a restart I'm actually gonna to have to do. So again, you can kind of see the keyhole at the top, uh, kind of where I was favoring that top edge. And after we get all done with this weld, we're gonna show you what the backside looked like and I'll pinpoint out where I actually made the restart. Now, the best way to actually make a restart on this is actually what is called feathering out. So basically right here at the tip of your, at the keyhole of your weld, the start of the keyhole, you're actually gonna take a grinder and that cutting disc, and you're actually gonna kind of just grind that down a little bit and thin it out a little bit. That way when you come up to it, It'll actually blow through right before you get to that keyhole. All right, so let's go ahead and get this grounded down for you. Alright guys, so we got it feathered out. Uh, I'm actually going to start back here on this back side. 
and then we're actually going to work our way towards it. Now the idea is right before I get to that keyhole, and this is the section I'm talking about, I actually want to blow through right here to make sure it's a good solid tie-in. Alright, so let's see what we got. All right, so you can see I got my rod start up, and right here I'm fixing to push in right before I get to the end of that keyhole. And see how it blew through and tied in there? Pause there for just a second, get everything tied in good. Now, as I'm coming down through here, you can see I'm whipping out, and I'm coming right back. When I come back, I'm pausing there for just a second or two, just enough to, again to make sure I got enough penetration. I'm favoring that top edge. Now, you can't really see it. The light's a little bright. But again, as I whip out, I'm watching that keel and making sure it's cutting into the top and the bottom. And basically, it just makes a little circle, and making sure it's tied into both sides of the plate. And just keep that rod moving down through there and keep all that rod shoved in there. All good, and there I finished it out. All right, guys, so this is on the back side of that 2G. You can see how when my root started out, it started out just a touch bit cold. I stopped a second, turned it up about five amps, and actually restarted right there. But then this right here, this is the restart I'm gonna show you all. This is where I had it all feathered out and everything. You can see how it tied in real nice and neat, and that's what helps when you feather that out. I've got plenty of penetration coming down through here. My root's sticking through. Everything's broke down. And before you go to put that hot pass on, you need to come down through here and double check your toes on both sides to make sure everything's tied in. And make sure that it's tied in in the center, too. If you take too big of a step, you can actually have lack of fusion on that. So make sure you're taking good, tight steps and you're getting everything tied in. All right, guys. So now Gary's got the 2G root in. We're going to go ahead and put the 3G root in. All right, you can see here how the root's going in. All the spatter, again, all the sparks are going out the back side. When you do that, you're making sure that everything's going out the back, you got good penetration. Now, again, me and Dalton are both, you know, we whip our roots in on the uphill. Uh, again, we do really tight whips. We don't like big keyholes. That's a personal preference. Some people, you know, they want to make a big whip and everything. Again, however you're trained to do that, that's up to you. That's what we like. All right, so now we're going to do a restart. So just like how Garrett showed you to do it in the 2G, we're going to do it the exact same way in the 3G. So all we're going to do is grind this real thin right here. So that's why you can start back here and slowly come up and blow through right here where you last started. Your... All right, so let's go ahead and do this restart. So what I'm going to do is start down here, slowly come up to right here to where I stood, right here at the end where I grinded, and slowly come up and then push in. Alright, so we're going to make the restart right here. You can see how we're kind of just heating that metal up right before we get to the keyhole. And right there, it just heated up enough, we pushed on through. And we sat there for a second and then paused and made sure it made a good time. Now, again, like I said, me and Dalton are big fans. You know, we do a tight whip. You know, we don't let that keyhole get too big on us. It gives us a little bit more control. Uh, so, again, uh, run it real tight. We are whipping right here. You can see it kind of coming up and down when we're pausing there for a second and let that feel come in and everything's going good. And just making sure when you get to the top, smoothing into that tack and you're good to go. All right, guys, so this is Dalton's 3G root that's come in. Everything's tied in real nice and neat. He had a restart right here and done it the same way as I've done it on my 2G. Uh, feathered it out, tied into it real nice, and everything's broke down and everything's good. Same thing as the 2G, you want to make sure you check the toes, make sure you're checking all the weld and everything all the way around before you put that hot pass in. It's much easier to make, the hot, to make a repair before you put the hot pass in. That's when you need to properly do it. So don't get in a hurry and put the hot pass in and be like, oh man, I gotta go check my root. And then come back here and look and find out that you had a bad spot you need to fix. Make sure you're checking both your roots before you put that hot pass in. All right guys, so now that we got the root in here and everything's good with it, uh, if you have some problems, we're gonna talk about that in some later videos on how to actually repair those. But again, before you actually put your hot pass in, you wanna double check on that backside and make sure everything's tied in and good. So again, later on in the video, we'll show you all this. Uh, this one right here is good to go. It's solid. So again, we're going to start grinding our hot pass down. Now the key part about this is you don't want to grind too much. Because again, we're going to run them 8th inch 7018s. you got to run them pretty hot. So again, you don't want to make sure you don't get it too thin to where you don't blow through. So let's start grinding. Alright guys, 
guys. So whenever you're done your grinding, you can see right here that I smoothed out the center of my weld. The center of it's all shiny silver and that means it's all tied in good. But you can tell right here on the toes there's a little bit, there's still a little bit of that dark gray or maybe some of that black from that slag left over from that 6 to 10. Typically what we'll call those is wagon tracks. Now a good way to get rid of those wagon tracks is with a cutting wheel again. So you switch back over here, grab that cutting wheel, and all I'm going to do now is I'm not going to worry about the center of the weld. I'm just going to go right there on the toes of it and just kind of bump that a little bit and kind of smooth that out. She's ready to go. Now we can start putting our, our hot pass in. All right, guys. So we got our eighth inch seventy eighteen. Uh, let's start putting this hot pass in. All right, guys. So whenever you strike up with that seventy eighteen, you want to make sure you make like a little loop. And usually, I start at the top, and then when I come back, I kind of loop down to the bottom to make sure I tie it in. And then also make sure that you don't have any trap slag underneath there. Um, besides that, you know, running down through there, just a slight angle up towards the top, the same way as you've done your root, and you're kind of watching that bottom toe of that weld to make sure it's tying in really good and that puddle's laying out nice and flat inside there. Uh, and when you're running down through here, just make sure everything's going smooth, no frosting, no long arcing. You can see a lot of this stuff happening while you're welding. So again, just make sure you're keeping an eye on that and watching everything. Uh, when you have to make a restart, it's the same way. You just kind of start at the top, and make a loop back and kind of come down the bottom of that crater. All right guys, so the hot pass is in on my 2G weld. Uh, you can take a look at it. We'll talk a little bit more about them here in a minute once Dalton gets his in. But again, you know, make sure it's tied in good and everything's there and there's no trap slag anywhere. Uh, so right now, I'm gonna turn it over to Dalton. We're gonna hot pass the 3G. Stay tuned. All right guys, so now that we got the root in, we're gonna go ahead and hot pass it. So like Gary showed you in the 2G, we're going to do it the exact same way on the 3G. We're going to take this quarter inch disc and grind it down and get all those wagon tracks out of it. All right, so now that we got it skimmed down, now we're gonna run this cutting wheel up the sides and make sure we get all those wagon tracks out of the sides, right? All right guys, now that we got the root grinded, now we're actually gonna weld her up. Alright guys, when you start up with that 3G, make sure you start up ahead of it. And you can see how in the video we started up ahead and we came down and made like a little loop, just the same way as we did it on the 2G. Make sure you're keeping that rod in there good and tight and you're not wanting a long arc. And then really watching that puddle to make sure you're going, uh, you're not going to want to blow through. And that again comes back to having a good root. Keep that rod in good and tight, don't long arc. And we're going to run stringer beads up through there, so make sure you're not putting any side to side motion inside there. Uh, moving all the way up through there, make sure you're biting into the toes, watching that puddle, make sure it's rolling out and it's getting a good tie in. Uh, make sure you're not getting any trap slag on that. Besides that, there ain't much to it. I mean, it's pretty simple, just welding up through there. And again, I mentioned it on the 2G when you go to make a restart. You can see how when I came down, I actually looped around that crater of that previous weld and tied into it really nice and smooth. And then just keep on coming up and just keeping that rod in the center. Make sure the toes are biting into both sides of the plate. Make sure you're not favoring one side because again, you can get trapped slag or lack of fusion with that. And just keeping that rod centered and moving on up through there. And when you come up to the end of the plate, you'll see it here in just a second. Uh, make sure you got a good root in there and a good tack on your place. So that way you don't want to blow the, the end of the plates off. You can see how when I come up, I kind of keep that rod in good and tight, keep everything nice and cool. 
and I just kind of pause there for a second and that's when I end it. All right guys, so we got the roots and the hot passes in. Uh, the hot pass is done, you know, on our bark on the horizontal. Uh, you know, this is week three, you know, stay tuned for that fourth segment we're gonna have coming up and on the next one, you know, we'll see you next week and we're actually gonna start filling and capping these things. So again, stay tuned.